eminent American sociologist put the America of the mid-twenties under a microscope. Robert and Helen Lynn studied Main Street, USA. How did we live? How did we earn a living? How did we spend our leisure time? The average house, White Clabbered, cost between three and four thousand dollars. Our population was about 114 million. The average family had 2.8 kids, and a third of them completed high school. One in six of these children went on to finish college. These are the Peters, an average family. They enjoyed the modern conveniences of the time. New toaster, running water, indoor plumbing, vacuum cleaners. Pa Peters had a good job, put in 10 hours a day, five and a half days a week, and earned about 55 cents an hour. His annual income was just over $1,500. The get a horse days were over. Some 15 and a half million cars were on the roads of America. Mother Peters cooked with gas instead of coal, shopped in the chain store springing up everywhere, enjoyed her super heterodyne radio. Delighted in that God-given right to all women, the telephone. Nearly one home in two on Main Street had phones. Prosperity gave rise to new leisure. Americans, the Sunday driver, took over the countryside. The Peters world expanded. You picked your spot, you packed your lunch, and weather permitting, you indulged in your favorite outdoor pastime. What changed the face of the land said the Lynns in their report on Main Street USA, was scientific advance. And underlying each new development was the great sinew of America, steel. From a flourishing industry in the 20s, steel production expanded until today, it flows like a torrent into every aspect of America, shaping and molding the world we live in. Research unlocks the secrets of the future. The people who make up research are all the people who work at Armco, in the plants, in production, and here at the research center itself. This is the heart of the company. For more than 60 years, many changes that have revolutionized the lives of Americans have had their origins in Armco research. Using the latest equipment, the most experienced specialists engage in an unending search for something new, something better. They have at their disposal the best thinking and writing of Americans and of the world. Most of us think of steel as iron, period. But steel is iron transformed, iron added to, iron alloyed in a thousand ways. Iron in its natural state will sustain little pressure, support no weight. It can be drilled into like wood. But refined, alloyed, coated, it becomes one of man's most versatile servants. From the spectrum of elements added to iron comes a spectrum of steels, each different, each for a special purpose. Steel must be put together in imaginative new ways to utilize its potential fully. Ultra-thin magnetic alloys, one sixteenth the thickness of a human hair for computers and other electronic devices. Porcelain coated steels for many uses requiring only one coat of porcelain where formerly two were needed. But research scientists are never satisfied. They twist steel to test resistance to strain, to chipping. They check for adherence. They torture steel in research 
so that it will function better in the kitchen or on the road. Yesterday's mufflers wore out quickly. Subjected to destructive heat, corrosive forces of acid and gas fumes, the muffler was the perennial, if not more frequent, headache of every car owner. Coated steel research attacked the problem. Corrosive waste was collected, analyzed over a sustained period. Steel research moves methodically, moves carefully from idea to test. Years went into the muffler study. In constant consultation with the production experts and automotive specialists, the scientists finally produced the best solution within realistic cost limits, aluminized steel. They proceeded to test in life. 150 experimental mufflers were manufactured, installed on standard makes, and sent out on the road. 25,000 miles later, under average conditions of usage, the mufflers were removed, dissected as it were, and the results analyzed. Their handiwork looked good. The scientists were right. Four out of every five new cars now come equipped with aluminized mufflers, substantially lengthening muffler life. The muffler story is matched by the washing machine story, the stove, the refrigerator, the seamless pipe, the stainless steel story. Yesterday's ideas and specialties, today's commodities. Research means making the best use of available sources of ore. This is the great Masabi range, an inexhaustible supply as any schoolboy knows. But the truth is, the supply of high-grade ore is running out. The low iron content of the taconite rock that remains was thought to be too low for practical use, unless an economical way could be discovered to extract the silica and other impurities from taconite. The scientists went to work, first crushing the rock into powdered form. In conjunction with the University of Minnesota, they devised means of extracting the iron content from the powdered rock. After much experimentation, a magnetic method was devised to separate the iron from silica and other impurities leaving a high-content iron powder. But this powder was as fine as flour. Placed in a blast furnace, as in this demonstration, it would simply blow out of the stack. It was useless. More experimentation followed until the scientists discovered a way to agglomerate the fine powder, to make it into pellets. Now, taconite in pellet form could be put into the blast furnace and not blow out. The work continued. Manufacturing facilities were developed in the laboratory. Eight years and more than $200 million went into solving the problem. Steel could be made now from taconite rock. The great Misabi range became once more inexhaustible. Yesterday's research idea is today's commonplace. Pelletizing is now the most widely used method on earth for making steel from powdered ores. From the president and the director of research to every plant worker, research is not merely an aspect of company policy, it is the essence of the company. 35 years ago, steel making was the back-breaking work of strong men with tongs, passing the hot metal back and forth. The process was slow, hazardous, costly. Why not make steel the way paper is made, in a continuous process? It can't be done, the experts replied. But John Titus of Armco wouldn't listen. It took him 16 years to prove that continuous rolling of steel could be accomplished. 
The new process ended the slow, primitive methods of steel making, ended the brutal toil for the steel worker, and ushered in the age of mass production and abundance. Today, steel producers throughout the world utilize this method, and steel rolls through the mills at 24 miles an hour. The breakthrough by Titus was followed by another important breakthrough. If continuous rolling of steel is possible, asked a man named Senzima, why can't it be coated continuously? Again, research found the answer. Armco made possible the continuous production of zinc grip that made possible thousands of new consumer products which had hitherto depended upon more costly and less durable painted steels. Steel research also investigates the process of melting steel. A decade ago, using air for combustion, the average time for refining was 12 hours. Today, by forcing pure oxygen into the molten metal, the time needed for an average heat has been cut in half. New processes like the basic oxygen converter reduce it even further, cut an average heat to one hour. Research constantly examines advanced ways of making steel. Here it is being made in a vacuum. High-speed cameras record the process for study. It is used only for extremely high-purity steel today. Tomorrow, when it becomes more economical, it will be put into mass production. From operators, from engineers, from salesmen, as well as from the scientists themselves. For it is the company's policy to encourage every man to be research-minded. All are on the research team. Sales, operations, staff, all divisions, sales offices, and plants. In the words of President Logan Johnston, seen with research director Ted Olt, research is the backbone of our democracy, for it has created freedom from want without denying the rights and dignity of the individual. From the continuous rolling mills of steel production developed by research, come the continuous assembly lines of products. Autos, the miracle of mass production. Stoves, washing machines, dishwashers, bathtubs, refrigerators, fences, TV antennas, bolts and fasteners, where? Wheels that move the nation's railroad cars. Wire rope used in bridges and construction. Bars grinding balls for mining and cement making. Welded tubing for bicycles and lawn furniture. Steel to bring oil from the depths of the earth and transport it a thousand miles. Steel for ships and for cranes. Steel resistant to corrosion, bridges, culverts and drainage structures. And a wide range of buildings. Steel that is beautiful and steel that is strong. In everyday life, commonplace uses, but each important. And in a thousand unseen uses, gas mains and coils. The spine of the skyscrapers rising proudly. The great petroleum industry. The vast and complex world of construction. Steel for water and for fuel, for electricity. Steel until one wonders how did man live before there was the miracle of modern steel. What have these last 35 years of scientific advance meant to Americans? What has happened to Main Street USA and to the Peters family in that brief period? We have grown. Nearly 200 million people live in this, the most abundant society devised by man. We live better have a greater share in the luxuries than any people have ever known. The richness is cultural as well, spiritual.
steel has helped us to enjoy more of the higher values of life. For the Peters, today's average family, these 35 years have brought a revolution in living. Two out of three people now own their own homes. Our population has increased by 75 million. Today, five times as many children finish high school and 10 times as many graduate from college as in the 20s. From 55 cents an hour, dad's rate of pay has climbed to $2.39. Because of progress in steel, fundamental to all progress, the family enjoys the improvements, enjoys greater freedom, greater leisure. More adult classes are taken, more books are read. There is more participation in this, our democratic process. Food is better, more easily cooked, health care is better. The family has more time to be together, to play together, to enjoy life together. Because of research, because of steel, because of progress. This is the future of America. This boy, an active human being. An inquisitive one. His searching mind asks the as yet unanswered questions. This generation will move faster on steel, more safely. Break new barrier speed and time and place. They will harness nuclear energy and explore the far reaches of the universe. This we know. Steel, the fiber of America today, will be the sinew that will answer the challenge of the future. enjoyed her super heterodyne radio. Delighted in that God-given right to all women, the telephone. Nearly one home in two on Main Street had phones. Prosperity gave rise to new leisure. Americans, the Sunday driver, took over the countryside. The Peters world expanded. You pick your... The average house, white clabbered, cost between three and four thousand dollars. Our population was about 114 million. The average family had 2.8 kids, and a third of them completed high school. One in six of these children went on to finish college. These are the Peters, an average family. They enjoyed the modern conveniences of the time. New toaster, running water, indoor plumbing, vacuum cleaning. Two eminent American sociologists put the America of the mid-twenties under a microscope. Robert and Helen Lynn studied Main Street, USA. How did we live? How did we earn a living? How did we spend our leisure time? Spot, you pack your lunch, and weather permitting, you indulge in your favorite outdoor pastime. What changed the face of the land, said the Lynns in their report on Main Street USA, was scientific advance. And underlying each new development was the great sinew of America, steel. Pa Peters had a good job, put in 10 hours a day, five and a half days a week, and earned about 55 cents an hour. His annual income was just over $1,500. The get a horse days were over. Some 15 and a half million cars were on the roads of America. Mother Peters cooked with gas instead of coal, shopped in the chain store springing up everywhere.